Hello my fellow DIYers and focus owners. Today I'm going to show you how I change my rear bearings. Yes, only the bearings, not the hub assembly. Just the bearings in it. In my 2001 Ford Focus. A small thing that I would like to mention, uh, calling this video a how-to is kind of uh, not the best idea because this is how I did it and I kind of figured it out on the way. So yeah. Now about how I started, with every hunk of junk or rusty piece of scrap you should spray some WD-40 on the rusty screw or any kind of penetrating oil for that fact so you have an easier job undoing the screws, bolts or whatever you're undoing. So after that I try to figure out what socket I need for undoing those bolts. Well it was A13. And as you can see, uh, it might be a good idea to have a longer socket, not the standard one. And because my head isn't small as a pebble, I couldn't really see what the hell was I doing. On the other hand, the camera is conveniently placed in a good position and you can actually see what I'm doing. So I was struggling a bit with removing those two bolts, after that I took out the breaker bar and used that. The good thing with the sockets that I bought is that I can assemble a breaker bar out of some adapters and uh, these long, long pieces. As you can see the breaker bar cannot fit so I added another long adapter to it. Thing worth mentioning here is if you have the correct tools it's not that hard of a job. Oh and if you're removing the caliper it might be a good idea to replace the brake pads if needed or the brake rotor if needed. Okay, so uh, back to our rusty bolts. Now that I loosened them up, I uh, use a ratcheted wrench to remove them. That would be one, and uh, there should be another one on the top, like that. After removing the two bolts, I gave a few taps to the caliper, so it kind of moves out of its place and I can get it off. Now luckily for me, the caliper was kind of stuck because the rotor had grooves. So I couldn't slide the caliper with the pads off because the pads were sitting in the groove that was in the rotor. So I had to use one or two screwdrivers to pry it off. As you see here, I'm kind of struggling getting the caliper off. You can't do it by hand if it's in this state. Okay, I was thinking if I loosen up those two bolts, the pads will kind of fall out of the caliper and I can remove them. By the way, those two bolts uh, need wrenches on the other side to hold them in place so you can remove them. If I remember correctly, the exterior bolts were 13s and the interior ones 11 or something like that. But your best bet is to take a whole wrench and socket set with you. So I wasn't working alone, there was this guy who does uh, usually maintenance and repairs cars in his free time and he showed me this uh, technique with the prying using a screwdriver if the caliper is stuck on because of the pads. Just a side note here, use a really crappy uh, screwdriver because obviously you don't want to destroy a new tool. Another thing worth mentioning here is how the pads were stuck on their rails and I had to pry them off uh, yeah they were a bit seized a bit is a kind of a soft word they were freaking stuck these are the reasons why a 10 or 15 minute job turns into a 3 hour job so after I took both calipers off left and right I inspected the pads they weren't that bad but uh, was a good idea replacing them. I did replace them afterward at that time I did put them back on. So as you can see most parts are rusty and I need to clean them off with a uh, wire brush. Now moving on to removing the rotors or the discs. An interesting thing I found here is there weren't a screw or bolt that held the disc to the hub assembly. It was only this uh, locking washer thingy so I bent the teeth so I can remove it and I wasn't thinking about reusing that so it was scrap anyway. 
At this time you should be able to remove the rotors by hand but uh, on my car they were stuck. So I skipped that step and uh, I was preparing to remove the whole uh, hub assembly by removing that metal dust guard that also was stuck and I had to hammer it out. Uh, luckily the bearing set came with a replacement. Uh, also you should always replace those because you can't really get them off without bending them. I even managed to poke a hole through one of those. So yeah, they are cheap anyways. Uh, I think there were 10 lay a piece in case you need extra replacements. So after a lot of hammering and poking a hole through it I managed to remove them both. Finally exposing that goddamn axle nut that I really wanted to remove. So at this point it kinda took me one or two hours. Remember I did this the first time and I got stuck a few times before help came. Now I was removing the cap on the other side. I think uh, on the other side came off pretty easy. So yeah, finally, finally I could remove the axle holding nut or whatever that piece is called. To remove that uh, you need a big socket, something like a 29 millimeter and a really big breaker bar because it was really tight on. So after that uh, I used the smaller wrench, ratcheted wrench and I got the knot off pretty easily. I was like, woohoo finally I can get the hub off because it should come off easy just by pulling it by hand. Well obviously that didn't happen because it would have been too easy and uh, luckily for me it was stuck and I needed a special tool that I kinda didn't have and I used the wheel to pull the hub assembly off. This idea kinda came in mind at the right moment, hashtag Romanian mechanic, but let me tell you that the professionals use kind of a hub removal hammer tool thingy. Now, I should have been able to remove the hub, but luckily for me the caliper was right on the rotor and uh, I couldn't get it off really easily, so I couldn't get the goddamn hub assembly off with the rotor. So yeah, mistake, mistake. Well, it was my first time, what do you want? So I kind of pushed the uh, hub assembly back, pulled the caliper off and after that I pulled the whole hub assembly off the spindle. Oh yeah, uh, the caliper didn't need to be hanged with the bungee cord as uh, you should do in the front because it had a really good spot like sitting there on the suspension parts. Oh yeah, in case you have the drum brakes on the rear that's uh, uh -huh. a little bit different. Now let me show you how this should uh, come off on the other side. So for some reason on that side it wasn't stuck at all. Lucky me, eh? So, that's the ABS ring that uh, the ABS sensor reads because you have ABS on the rear wheels with the disc brakes from what I know. I will point out the ABS sensor location in the video. After removing the hubs, I went ahead and cleaned them off with a wire brush. I tried not to scratch the spindle with the wire brush because that was uh, procedurally machined and uh, there, if you can see, there's the ABS sensor. I will put an arrow or something to that. So I kind of cleaned off the mating surfaces with the wire brush, but I uh, didn't go too crazy with it. And uh, I'm like looking at how everything should be in place without the rotor. I'm kind of a curious person. So after I had the two hubs in my hand, I uh, went ahead and uh, remove the two locking rings. Fortunately, I don't have uh, other footage of this because I didn't want to anger the guy whose uh, press I was using. Now here's a piece of metal that I used to press out the bearing. I should mention that I used a hydraulic press for this and not everybody has a hydraulic press, so it might be a good idea to take it to a shop. So moving on, I think this is the old bearing out and uh, by the way the new bearings are directional so they should be put in in a specific way. On the other hand I kind of got uh, with the bearing set that I bought, it was an SKF set, so I got instructions with uh, which side should be on the inside and which 
side of the bearing should be on the outside. So about the old bearings, they were pretty tight in there and I'm not sure if you can uh, get them out easily without a 20 ton hydraulic press. Okay, so I'm pressing in the new bearings and uh, the guy told me to put the old bearings on top of the new bearings uh, because that way when I'm pressing against it I'm not destroying the new bearings. So yeah, that's how it came out, the new bearings are in and as you can see there I have the rotor removed so the rotors kind of popped off when uh, I was pressing them. So here I have an upside down shot of the bearing with the safety ring in place. The new bearing set came with uh, these new safety rings and uh, they were pretty good. Uh, they even had like a spare safety ring. Okay, after all of this I reassembled the car, put the rotors back on, pads back in, uh, put everything on, hammered the new dust caps in. Oh yeah, I'm saying this again because it's important. The bearings have a special direction that they should go in. You can just put them on as you want. And also don't forget to put on the ABS rings because otherwise your ABS won't work. So after you have everything on the correct way, you do a test drive. The test drive should be a few hundred kilometers or miles. And after that, you should remove the uh, dust cap and retighten the axle nut. And you might be asking yourself, how much time would I need to complete this job? Well, for me, it took like five or six hours to complete it, but it was my first time. Okay, enough for today. So thank you very much for watching this video, I hope it helped you out and motivated or demotivated you to do this job. In case you can't do it, just take your car to a mechanic and he will take care of it, hopefully. In case you have any questions, I'm here, you can post them in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, whatever. And as always, have a nice day and for your free out.